Hello and welcome to Grid 2 Uncovered live stream number 6. I'm Lee from Codemasters. Uh, joining me this week as ever, I've got Ben manning the chat box. Say hello, hello. Ben. Uh, Luke's also here this week. He's going to be manning the Twitter. Say hello, hello. Luke. Hello. Back on the wheel this week again. Thank you very much for coming back, Joe. No problem. Uh, and also joining us this week, we've got Ian. Hi. Hi, How's Ian. It going? Thanks for joining us. Um, I suppose we'll start off a little bit, sort of a little bit about yourself. What is it that you do uh, on Grid 2? Uh, I'm the producer on the project. I'm the producer on the project. Sorry, I was too far away from the mic. There. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm just really involved in in loads of different aspects of the development of the game, really, um, from from top to bottom. Yeah. So what's like a normal day in the life of a producer then? Uh, there isn't any such thing. <laughs> <laughs> I can be uh, I can be working on things like this and um, doing sort of PR related activities and working with the brand team, um, but also you know you can come in. And uh, you get bugs and things that are just completely left to field that you don't expect to come up, and that shapes your day. Uh, if you've got a bug in your inbox in the morning and it's um, something that you don't expect, then you can be working with sort of uh, four or five different teams to get it resolved. So, so you're the Superman of Grid Two. Uh, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to say that, that's cool. But uh, but you're going to tell everybody that tomorrow. Yeah, aren't yeah, we'll do it. I'll say uh, <laughs> Superman by uh, by name and nature. Uh, right, okay, so uh, coming up in tonight's show, um, we've got some never seen before um, overtake, which is a new mode that, like I said, you guys haven't seen before. We're going to be doing that on Barcelona. We're also going to be running the time attack mode on Indianapolis. We'll be showing off some more car customization. Uh, you guys really loved it last week, so we, we like showing it off as well. It was good fun. Uh, we'll try and make a slightly more prettier car this week I think professional car a more professional car is probably yeah that's probably not pretty is the right word professional car yeah. <laughs> and then we'll also be doing a race on the Court du Jour um, right I think we're ready I think we'll jump straight into a race yeah sure yeah we'll jump straight into a race we're going to go over to Barcelona um, as you can see we're in the Mercedes uh, C63 what can you tell us about this car Ian um, well, it's one of uh, three different uh, Mercedes that are in the game, actually. Um, it's um, Sorry, I'm, again, I'm too far away from the mic. Um, yeah, so it's actually one of my favourite cars, and it appears in Tier 2 in the game. Um, and, you know, as you can see, it's got all the uh, classic Mercedes styling. Um, and it's, it's one of the cars that I think has some of the best handling in the game as well. Uh, it, alongside um, the sort of... Uh, heavier BMWs. The E30 has a, a tendency to slide around, but the um, the M1 and then the M3 um, are both, you know, really quite heavy cars and they have that sort of hefty German feel when you're when you're taking them around the track. So the, these are really fun to play. Um, so uh, I think Joe's going to take us into the race. Yep, yeah, there you go. Yeah, just go for it. Okay, right. Into the loading screen, we'll get on with the show. Um, we'll shut the mic down after this. What we're going to be doing is we've been asking for you guys questions. So if you've got anything that you want to know about Grid 2, something that you might have seen, something that you haven't seen yet, just fire the questions over in the chat box uh, and we'll do our best to answer them a little later on.
there we go guys that was overtake mode Joe what happened you didn't win <laughs> well you've got to be quite patient overtake mode you can't go you can't go full beans you've got to sort of take your time choose your moments and because as soon as you hit somebody all your multiplier's gone and you start back See, to zero so it's, I noticed you doing that because I would be just ploughing straight through yeah, all of those trucks that's the aim of the game you've got to take your time choose your lines and just opportunist you just got to go for the opening when you can and not be too overzealous with it. You, can, you just can't go racing on the track like you are in time attack it just don't work mm. you can go around and try it if you like but you won't get anywhere you really have got to take your time and it's it's actually quite difficult someone mm. stitched him up as well because he put it on very hard so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think yeah. that was yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who suggested that it might it might it might have been me who put you on very hard <laughs> um so tell us a little bit about sort of uh, the overtake mode how does how do you guys have an idea like that and it go from well obviously not existing to sort of making it right through into the game what's the whole process like for getting something like that in that isn't necessarily a normal a normal type of racing mode um, well the idea for overtake um, is that I mean it, it sits quite naturally in the career mode in the game it does also appear in online and uh, in custom race but uh, it fits naturally into the career because uh, what we imagined was that alongside the sort of uh, traditional racing that you'd be doing, the stuff that you'd be doing in race series and that sort of thing, um, you would be getting given promo events as well. So in your career HUD, you're going to have a series of different events against um, primarily clubs to take on and invite into the WSR and then ultimately WSR events as well. Um, but alongside those, you'll have vehicle challenges where you can pick up vehicles that um, you didn't pick earlier on in the career. Um, and then also you'll have uh, promo events is, and, and that's the area of the game that this type of mode lives in so what what we imagined was that uh, as a real race driver you would have uh, various different brands coming to you in the case of the um, live stream that we're showing at the moment uh, the brand for this particular event is Flat Fitty and they're basically uh, putting on this event as a showcase it's a sort of um, spectacle sort of thing um, so as you can see, the different trucks that are on the track are not particularly competitive. They're just there to get in your way. Uh, it's you against uh, an AI opponent, um, and it's head-to-head. -head. So basically, you have to overtake more trucks that are on the track than they have. Um, and essentially, it's the person that gains the most points for overtaking those trucks that will win at the end of the game. Um, but it's the type of thing that we imagined that in real life... Um, maybe some, some big sponsor would put on an event and they would have somebody like Tanner Faust go against Ken Block or they would have Michael Schumacher go against um, Sebastian Vettel or something like that just as a sort of uh, little bit of a showcase and something for people to talk about uh, on the internet and that really feeds into what the mechanics in the career mode of the game are um, as you progress through it you increase your fan count um, so I mean that that just feeds in exactly to what this is. Um, brands would do this for sort of viral purposes to get more people talking about their brands. So uh, if if lots of different people are uh, talking about this particular event, then that makes perfect sense. So uh, competing in these will give you more fans in the career as well. Cool, awesome. Right, we've been getting your questions in. We actually collected some of these up earlier as well. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to field a very random selection of questions to you. First one comes from Army Boy 1994 over on Twitter. He wants to know how many cars and tracks are there in the game in total. Um, it's it's a tricky one off the top of my head. Uh, there are around fifty cars, fifty plus cars in the game. Um, so first off, it's important to state that it's not exactly an arms race with the likes of Gran Turismo and Forza. It's it's not something that we ever set out to do with this game. We wanted enough fresh, cool content from start to finish in the game to keep you hooked in. We don't want uh, 50 different variations of the same uh, Mercedes car in, in different uh, guises. We want the sort of best, most iconic cars from each manufacturer uh, and also from each different type of race series. So uh, it's about getting an eclectic, different, um, uh, I guess, um, mix of cars um, that you can pick up and, and you can learn the different styles of racing in them. So there's around 50 different cars. As far as tracks are concerned, um, we have, I think, 12 different locations. And then within the locations, there are around five or six different track variants. So um, there's, there's lots of variation there. And then when you add into the mix, the live routes aspect as well. So in the city tracks, obviously, we've got the live route system, which offers almost infinite variation on the different uh, ribbons of track that we've already built there. So 
Uh, I think there's quite a lot of different variations. Plenty to keep people busy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, right, okay. This next question comes from Matt Matt 524 on Twitter. He wants to know what we've changed with the drift events. Um, well, I, I tend to say this quite a lot about all of the aspects of the game, but um, we really sort of broke down everything that we, we did in Grid 1 and then tried to rebuild it from the ground up and really said, what is it that's making these things work and what things do we need to improve on? Um, one thing in particular with drift that we, we found was a little bit uh, of an annoyance or a hindrance to players uh, in grid one was that you'd find that players tend to sort of fishtail quite a lot. They'll just slalom left and right, left and right to try and uh, create the enorm- score. enormous combos. Yeah, so that's something that we've we've managed to get rid of this time and actually put emphasis on linking real drift. So like properly getting the back end of the car out and actually controlling a car that's lost traction. So um, we basically um, implemented a system whereby. Uh, the tech detects how how much of a drift you're in, whether or not you're like what angle you're actually drifting at, and what your proximity is to the actual drift marker on each corner. So uh, that's improved it so that you don't go online and actually pull off amazing, brilliant drifts, and then somebody else is just sort of fishtailing along the course and getting a million times multiplier for it. It makes it a little bit more fair to the people that are playing properly. Cool. Um, we've also been we've also been getting a lot of questions on um, on, on sort of customization options. Obviously, we shown this off last week in the live stream. Um, what we're actually going to do is we're going to show it off a little bit more today. Um, but this question that's come in on Twitter, um, there's a lot of people asking it in the chat box as well. A sort of similar question. Um, this is from Juice X Machina, and he wants to know: Can the liveries? your opponents use be recreated in the livery editor because he was jealous of some of his opponents liveries in grid one uh yes absolutely um the livery editor in well obviously we're going to show it in a little bit more detail now but uh it really allows you to do anything that you see on the other cars in the game um so if you go online in a race and somebody's got a fancy livery and different patterns and so on you're actually going to be able to go find that in your in your cache of different stuff in the livery editor um, the only time I think that you're not going to be able to completely replicate what you see online is if you're no sorry not online in the career mode is when you come up against the different clubs um, because you're not driving for those clubs uh, you can't actually ha- you can't have the decals and stuff that they so have you there, can't so. you can't do your car up like um, elimination and, uh, and and like Trans America and yeah the, exactly the yeah so they they sort of stand on their own um, but you are obviously able to to sort of customize it to your heart's content with the decals available to you awesome right okay i'm just loading up the liberty editor so that we got we can uh we got we can show you all the uh actually we, i know what we haven't spoken about yet um we haven't spoken about the brand new shiny garage um fans of the live stream that have been watching in the past you will have noticed that we've been in i don't know how best to describe it it was kind of like somebody's house yeah Yeah. (laughs) there was the dog outside and cars driving past um obviously something's changed at this point in the game so how is it we've found ourselves in this new much bigger garage um so essentially in the career mode of the game there there's the sort of thread if if you're not familiar with it i'll just do a sort of simple overview but basically patrick callahan has asked you uh, to come on board and be his star driver. He's an entrepreneur that wants to start World Series racing. So in the first garage that you're in, it was really you going to different club events and beginning to sort of pick up momentum um, as, a, as a race driver and get the WSR a little bit of um, buzz and a little bit of um, people talking about it. After you get to the point where the first WSR takes place, um, rightly so, he kind of sees that you've got the talent that he was looking for. Um, so going into season two, you move into this uh, slightly bigger, uh, shinier garage with a bit more space, room for uh, all the different equipment that you'll be using. And as you can see in the background, there's also space for, for more than just one car. Um, so it, it really sort of helps sort of drill in the progression and show that the world around you is evolving while you're playing the game. Um, it's also a movement from, uh, in the first garage, you just sit on the um, sort of PC screen uh, so you move across that to navigate through your different events. Now that you move to Garage 2, you've got a sort of projected uh, video projector on the wall. To so is that, is it, I can't quite do it with the controller, is that what's behind us there over by the car? Exactly, yeah, that in the background there is uh, the place where you'll navigate through the different events and different parts of the of the title. 
cool. Right. I'm trying to pick a nice, a good livery. That I, like. I think I'm quite liking this one. I think black and grey always works quite well if you're going for something slightly more I wanted to I wanted to change the colours a bit because we're always showing off black and grey. Um, I don't know what to go for a base colour though. Just look mean. Just look mean. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously we've got the flip paint on here. Uh, I think, what do you think? Oh, that looks better. Yeah, it shows up the detail on the, the black uh, decal quite well. Right. There we go. Okay, that's the first one picked. Um, we're on a bit of red. So we've got that there. Where's that going? That's on the stripe. I quite like that. I don't know. Works well with the NSX. Um, what have we got? Rear light panel, doesn't it? We went, well, I don't know. The white... What do you think, guys? Guys in the chat box, let us know what you think. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm okay with that. I quite like the white one. So um, I, didn't, I didn't catch the outcome of last week's livery editor. Last but... week's livery editor, the first one I really, really liked. The first one was... Um, disco dinosaur. It was, yeah, it was pretty much a disco dinosaur. It was <laughs> The car was black with the Velociraptor on the side. Okay. Um, with like neon pink and green and... Okay. Like blue, blue, it looked awesome. <laughs> um, the second car that we did, uh, which was the BMW 1M, that didn't look so good, I'm going to be honest with you. Okay. <laughs> so we need to up our game. We need to up right our game. Right. We need to look, well, we're in tier two now. Yeah. We're not messing about in dad's garage. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, we need to well, up our game. A, a big thing in. Uh, in terms of the livery editor is because um, you can set the colors the way that you want them but also the manufacturer logos that appear in the car um, sometimes their color sets are just not going to match the style that you want for the car yeah um, you think back to some of the sort of famous formula one um, livery styles they've always really embedded the sponsorship into it i think quite a lot of them are actually probably selective about the sponsors that they have so that it fits their With sort the of car, yeah. style so uh, as well as the the decals and that aspect of what's going on there um we we also have um access to the sponsors that you've already picked for your car uh, and your ability to sort of change those as well so you'll be able to change the colors um, and flip them around to to things that are actually appropriate to the car that you and the style that you've got um the, the sponsors that you pick, though, you do, uh, just to go into a little bit more detail about that, you pick those once um, per season, um, and then you stick with them per season because uh, a really important part of the sponsor system is that you have to complete objectives to um, win fans from them. So, um, for example, uh, uh, HKS or um, Ogio, as they're sort of shown on there, or Toyo Tires, give you a particular um, objective to complete while you're playing the game. Um, and then through that season, you should be able to sort of cumulatively um, do that over the, over the course of the season. Or it might just be to actually beat the star driver for a club. Whatever it may be, um, we kind of felt that you need the, the whole season to be able to do that. So that's why they remain on the car until you get another chance to sort of switch them around at the so start of the next. You swap them you swap them around sort of as you go. So yeah. Obviously, I mean, everything we've showed in the game before, that was always when we were at Tier 1. We were right at the start of the game then, which yeah. is why we didn't have anything on the car. Um so once they're all sort of on the car, I mean, you, like you say, you've got those bonuses and everything. That's made that's quite a bit of a change from, I suppose, the money system that we used in the first grid. Yep. Um, do we need money for any essentially for anything in grid two? Uh, yeah, the, the, there is a currency system that exists online, um, but in the single player campaign, uh, the the player essentially um, has all the stuff that would cost money delivered to them. Uh, from Patrick Callahan, so he's sort of the entrepreneur who's going to give his star driver if you're the poster boy for the company then you shouldn't want for anything so any time that you need a vehicle to get into a particular event style um, or a vehicle to, to drive in a particular series then he'll deliver that to you uh, and you should be good to go in the online aspect of the game um, you're going to need to spend your cash and spend it wisely as well so, sort of about making choices and, and spending that money uh, in a way that sort of a will get you to where you need to be against your opponents in the game and also sort of uh, help demonstrate your personality online as well so whether that's for uh, physical upgrades for the car uh, things that will change the shape of the actual body work and paneling uh, or whether that's things that are going to sort of do things under the hood to improve performance um, so yeah the money system the currency system is in place online cool so i've just noticed we've got this um we've got a couple of different options with where we actually want the uh 
sort of the decals to go on the car, which isn't something that we had before in the previous grid as well. Yeah, there's a sort of multi-layout system. So as you can see at the bottom there, the different styles that you can go through are drift, which was the layout you just saw, and then race, which has a more sort of traditional feel and more square, straight on type placements. Uh, and then street, which is uh, more akin to the type of thing that you'd see in Gumball Rally, um, something where the sponsorship is uh, pretty dominant on the actual, on the vehicle. Cool. I don't know what looks best for this. I'm quite liking the drift, actually. I think that lays out quite nice on this. You think? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, right, okay. We'll Unless go with that then. <laughs> cries of pain in the comment section, then I think we'll go with that. <laughs> um, obviously, as well, like we sort of showed you guys before, you've got the store and recall function as well. Uh, what that lets you do is, you can, basically, you can save your liveries as you go. Um, so if you have a certain set, say you're in, you've got your own racing clan online and you race with a load of guys, you can all have your own custom livery, but then when you're playing on your own, if you want to, you can just uh, you can just sort of mess around and uh, have a bit of fun with it. Fly solo. <laughs> Fly solo. Uh, so we want to store this one. Uh, we will give it a name. Uh, I'm going to call it Red Stripe, because it has a red stripe and I'm a genius. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. That's all done. That is on. Uh, our NSX. We've also got this option here to apply it to all vehicles. Um, so should we do that? I think we'll do that. Uh, and then what we'll be able to do is when we when we do an event a bit later on in the game, uh, a bit later on in the live stream, sorry, you guys will be able to see uh, obviously what that looks like. So there you go. And that's automatically added to the whole of our garage. Awesome. Right. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass over to our tame racing driver. <laughs> He's going to set us up for our next event. Slow Joe. Slow Joe. <laughs> um, what we're doing for the next event, we're going to be doing a time attack event, which I don't believe we've shown time attack before either. Ben, have we shown time attack before? Nope. No, we haven't Brand shown time. New. Brand new. Cool. So tell us a little bit about time attack and how it works. Uh, so time attack is a mode that's essentially... Um, it's like a time trial, but actually you've got other cars on the track whilst you're doing it. So it gives you that added um, layer of com um, complexity in terms of taking the best possible racing line and really, really pushing it, um, but trying your best to stay away from opponents. So um, it's almost like um, a qualifying session might be. Um, so really you just have to set the best possible time in the number of laps that you've got available, but also uh, try your very best to stay away from the opponent cars as well. Cool, right. Let's get ready to go then. Uh, we'll knock the mic off, we'll let you guys enjoy the race, and then we'll be back with some of your questions. Um, just something that we have been asked, getting asked quite a bit in the chat. Um, and we've sort of been nagged about constantly over the last couple of weeks. Everybody's asking about the Steam pre-orders. Uh, they are now available. Um, if you log into Steam or visit to the uh, Steam Store website, you'll be able to see it on there. You can pre-order the game. We've got like a tiered unlock system as well uh, for all sort of the pre-order bonuses. We are currently sitting, I do believe... Uh, tier 1 has been unlocked so by pre-ordering the game um, you'll get uh, the first reward pack and we're about 10% into reward 2 at the moment um, so if you visit the Steam store you'll be able to check that out on there uh, I'll shut up now for a bit and we'll enjoy some Indianapolis <laughs>
There we go. What happened? Joe, what happened? Well, <laughs> the, the Indianapolis circuit is quite hard. So it's very flat. So it's very flat circuit. So it's very hard to judge where to sort of like start taking brake lines and stuff. Plus on the uh, on the first corner, it's a very wide sweeping corner that comes. It's like a, it's like a double sort of apex. I'm making excuses up here. Making excuses. Yeah, no, it's a really hard corner, and the car's quite a difficult car to get grips with. It's quite a focused car, so. Uh, I will um, vote for that. The it, yeah. NSX is a difficult car. It is. It is, it is difficult in the game. It, it, if you just over egg it a little bit, the back end will slip out, so you have yeah. to just be super careful. Next thing you know, you're on the grass. So that's why you notice me twitching the throttle, trying to keep the trying to keep the power on, but not too much. Just trying to keep control of the car, counter steering. It, it's just very difficult. I mean, you've seen the replay there. I'm trying to counter steer everything. It, it's it's a good focus car. It's just a very track focused car. It's just you got to get your teeth right into it. So I made a little little few mistakes, but. You know, I ain't played this game much, so... I've got a minute, that's not what you slack. said last week. I actually have to correct that. There's more than, I probably put over a thousand hours on this over game. Over a thousand yeah, hours. I went back and I was like, hold on a minute. I looked, looked at my uh, work ratio. I was like, no, it's a thousand hours plus. <laughs> it was the first time I've ever used the NXA. No, it is. <laughs> <laughs> that's my excuses. I, I just, I'm, that's all I'm hearing is excuses. <laughs> that's all you're going to hear from me. That's all you're going to hear. Um, yeah, okay. So, obviously, we hope you like that track, guys. It was... Uh, it's interesting to be able to show off. Yeah. So maybe uh, maybe you can come back next week and have another go, Joe. Bit more practice. <laughs> a bit yeah. more practice, yeah. yeah. Um, so tell us, I suppose, a little bit about the NSX. It's a very, it's a legendary car almost now. Um, so I suppose a little bit of history and why that car was selected as one of our sort of best of the best to go into grid. Um, well, I think uh, the cars that always have driven in Le Mans have been cars that the guys in the studio really sort of. Uh, hold up in really high regard and obviously it took part in the sort of uh, mid 90s Le Mans races I think um, and also as far as production cars go it was one of the ones that had the most sort of pub publicised um, influence from a, a race driver so Ayrton Senna obviously had uh, a fair bit to do with the, the car and how it was constructed um, obviously his championship cars always had Honda engines so um, he gave a lot of input to, to Honda when they created this car I believe he had sort of input with regards to how the chassis was built um, so that obviously sort of holds quite a bit of weight and, and we sort of all, all of us quite like this car I think it's one of those sort of universally liked cars it's got a really distinctive look uh, and it doesn't matter whether uh, your game's out in sort of mid 90s or if it's in 2013 this is a car that's sort of always going to hold a place I think it's timeless uh, yeah I, I think so it's iconic it's yeah, it's got an iconic sort of, um, even though it was built all the way through until, uh, I think, about 2005, I'm not 100% sure, but even though it was built until then, uh, it's still got that really sort of 80s, uh, early 90s style into it, so, so it's a really nice car. Right, okay. Um, we've got one couple of questions that we'll take. Um, guys in the chat box, we did see your question about the iFinity, don't worry. Would you like to confirm, does Grid 2 support iFinity? Yeah, we do. We do support it. Huzzah! So you, you stop copy pasting in the chat box now, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, some of the questions that we've had come in. Um, oh, I don't even know how to say this guy's name. Tokoro? Tokoro Bell? Tokorable. Tokorable, maybe, on Twitter. Um, he wants to know how many classic muscle cars will be in the game. Uh, there are around three or four. Um, the different ones that we actually have in the game are... Well, we've shown off a fair bit of the... Um, Ford Mustang Mach uh, 1 twist is special it's, it's been shown in quite a few different videos um, but we also have um, the Dodge Charger um, RT and then also Camaro Z28 um, and in addition to those we've got the sort of latter predecessors as well so the sort of more up to date versions of those yeah. cars so where do they sort of sit in the game sort of in the camp like in the tier system wise um so the majority ones, of them sort of I think majority tier of one. them are tier one and they will sit alongside the classic JDM cars as well so uh, we sort of wanted to have a little bit of an East meets West sort of vibe in that first season yeah um, the game does span across sort of the like North America Europe and Asia so just v kicking it off straight away with that sort of uh, challenge of East meets West is quite a cool way to go with it I thought cool um Question from We Riser over on Twitter. Uh, he wants to know: Is the online leveling system similar to our previous games? Uh, yes, it is. Um, I mean, it's as I mentioned before, it's not based on um, 
is not based on currency. Sorry, it is based on currency, unlike the single player mode. Um, but the leveling system is essentially based on um, leveling up as you complete races and beating opponents online and then spending the cash that you accrue while you're online um, on the various different things that you can do to your car. So um, to go into that in a little bit more detail, when you go from tier to tier in, in the um, online campaign, um, players are going to come up against opponents who have obviously got cars that are more souped up, more um, high performance than theirs. And in order to be able to compete with them, uh, they need to sort of begin accruing money, uh, being able to actually spend that on different things that they can do to the car, or um, continue to race in, in sort of lower level tier one races and spend that cash once you build it all up, spend that cash in a brand new car. It, it really depends on what way you want to do it. Uh, so the progression system works in, in that way. What, what you can do is that if you buy a tier one car, and you continue to upgrade it and upgrade it and, and do everything possible to it and then you come up against some tier 2 cars actually uh, the one that you've done so much upgrades on will be on par with some of those tier 2 cars because of the amount of work that you've done on it so those those tiers in terms of categorizing all the cars you can say yeah that's a tier 1 that's a tier 2 but actually it's uh, a lot more of a um, organic sort of thing uh, as it would be in real life when you, when you modify a car um, you can do various different things to its performance Right, okay, back to the garage. Um, there you guys can see that is uh, the VW Golf, obviously. That's our livery that's just been applied sort of straight to that when we hit that button that went apply all, obviously. That's why what that livery sort of looks like on the car. Um, if we wanted to, we could go in and again change it up. We can switch uh, sort of to the different styles from the drift to the street um, just to try and get it looking exactly how we want it to be. Um, so it's all very fast, it's very easy to do. You can sort of flick through it straight from well, regardless of whether you're playing online or not, you can even just flick through sort of the normal standard manufacturer livers that are on there and race with those if you want, if you don't want to be using your own for a particular race. I think that's one of the things that's so uh, good about the, the way that we've we've uh, delivered the livery editor for Grid 2 is that you can go into massive amounts of detail and choose like multi-tonal paint and choose what the different variations on the colour for that paint is and all that sort of thing. But if you just want to crack on with getting into races... Uh, but you don't want the default livery. It's really quick just to slam on some different colours and then get in the race. Yeah, you're not going to get pe You're not going to be missing out on anything by not no, doing exactly. it if you don't want to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, we'll take a couple of questions actually just before we jump into the next race. Um, take over some from some of the guys on the forums. Uh, SG, I want to say his name is SGLL. I never know how to pronounce School. internet names. School. They need a whole. I need the degree in pronouncing internet names. I needed, uh, to be honest, I need a degree in like, pronouncing most words. Just like. say the first thing that comes to your head. <laughs> um, he wants to know if we'll see Donington and other classic tracks in future DLC. Um, the DLC uh, will be announced in more detail, I think, when we come around to um, launch time. But um, certainly um, tracks and different things that are um, being floated around at the moment are things that I'm quite excited about telling people about. Um, there will be DLC. But you're not going to? Uh, yeah, unfortunately, no. we're not allowed to. And no, I was actually, trying to stop you. <laughs> yeah, well, well, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Um, there are a number of different tracks that are actually being floated around right now and they've not been completely confirmed. So um, if people shout loudly enough about certain things, then we might... Uh, we might so if there's enough demand for something, we can exactly, we can yeah. certainly look at it. It's nothing. We've got to finish the game first before we start working on exactly. the DLC. <laughs> yeah. Um, Okay, another question that's, uh, is, again, it's one of the regular ones. A um, couple of the guys on the forums, this guy is called Bianca Kizuro. That's a, Bianca I don't know. Kizuro. You could have just used a real name on the forums, honestly, guys, if you wanted. <laughs> <laughs> um, he wants to know if the Fanatec CSW will be supported uh, in Grid 2. Um I haven't got the full wheel list to hand at the moment, but you can just um, Ben will fire a link to the uh, to the wiki page uh, into the chat box. Um, you can visit IGN.com as well and uh, have a look at the Grid Two wiki, which we've sort of housed on there. That's got the full wheel list for you and everything on there. Um, so whether you've got a Fanatec or sort of any other brands of wheels, you'll be able to see if yours is sort of fully supported for uh, uh, for Grid Two. Um, I think we're ready for another race. I'm ready. You all ready for another race? Is everybody ready for another race? Yeah. Luke? Yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> right, okay. Yeah, if you just hit back. 
uh, what we'll do is then, okay, this next race, uh, what we're doing is we're going to the Cote d'Azur and St. Lawrence race. Um, I believe this is the first time we've showed this track off as well. Mm. Well, this, this version, version of the track. This version yes, of the we track. We did Cote d'Azur last week. Yes, we did, yeah. Yes. Um, right, okay. So, yeah, there are multiple routes that you can you can race on each different track. So. Yeah, and then obviously you've got the options of day or night on a lot of them as well. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I've gone for day. You've gone for day. Yeah, I, I can see that, it's dark. sunny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, we'll keep quiet and let you guys enjoy the race. Joe, third time lucky, you won an event. Well, I was holding back for the finale, really. I was uh, <laughs> beating them. So, <laughs> it was the big go. finish. It was a big finish, yeah, in the golf. Um, I'll ask, Ian, I'll ask you this. Uh, there's a lot of guys talking about sort of the physics um, that 
uh, have sort of gone in to make up grid two. Obviously, it's a very important part of any racing game is that it, it sort of feels right and everything acts as it should. Um, what can you tell us about the physics and I suppose why did we pick this this track as well at the end to show off at the end of the live stream? Um, so, well, yeah, so there, there have been massive up, uh, updates from what we've uh, previously done. Um, the last last title where we made uh, updates to physics was Dirt, Dirt 3 and then we continued those through Showdown. But with this, um, we've really pushed to ensure that the, the cars are... Te- well, when the player plays the game, they can feel exactly what the car should be experiencing through its wheels as they drive across the tarmac. So as the car moves across an expanse of track, the game is sampling the... Uh, undulations and changes in the road and as well as that the uh, changes in traction on the wheels uh, and how they're connected to the road um, 1000 times a second so it's operating at 1000 hertz Um, as far as I know the best competitors are sort of running at about 600 hertz all that means really is that the higher you sample that um, the the more feedback that you're getting for a track that you're covering so when you're moving at sort of 100 miles an hour for example across um, uh, maybe 100 meters or wh- whatever it may be, um, there are, there will be sections of the track that you're not having fed back to you if you don't sample high enough. So um, the physics simulation and what we can actually uh, understand and then like perceptibly feed back to the player through the controller so that they can then correct things. Like for example, when uh, Joe was driving in the NSX, uh, just as it began to lose traction, he was getting the feedback just you know quick enough to be able to hold it on the road. Obviously not in the first corner, <laughs> yeah. uh, but but once he once he got the grips with it, then he was then he was doing pretty like well. Throttle playing, a lot of count steering. You can you can you really know as soon as a car hits something, you you, you really start throttle playing and stuff. You really do know the car's gonna. You can feel it going to go, and you've got to yeah. correct it. You really can. Yeah, and then the second part was about Cote d'Azur, was it? Yeah, Cote d'Azur. Why did we pick this track? Um, well, luckily enough, I actually worked on Grid 2 way back when, when we originally sort of picked the different tracks and then looked at the pros and cons of the different places that we would include. And I think this is case in point. There's, there's a good example of a sort of motorway tunnel there uh, and a sort of more urbanised aspect of what the Côte d'Azur offers. And then it's juxtaposed with the beautiful vistas and the sort of uh, scenery and stuff that you, that you saw before we went into the tunnel. This bit's a little bit more urbanized as you sort of head towards the town there's a lot more of this sort of street signage and that sort of thing but just being able to sort of take the player on a journey when they drive at the start they've got the beautiful scenic aspects of it and then actually as you drive you've got sort of uh, a bit of a story to tell and a bit of a journey to go on um, and also I've just sort of spotted castle ruins and stuff as well so you know there's a, a bit of everything really yeah awesome right okay um we hope you guys have enjoyed the live stream this week. Um, very quickly, if you have liked what you've seen, um, drop by preorder.gridgame.com. Um, over on there, you'll find sort of all of the information, depending on what country you live, as to where's best to pre-order for you. Uh, obviously, if you're a PC player as well, you can visit uh, just boot up Steam. Um, we're sort of right there. I think we were sitting quite healthily at the top sort of half of the charts. Um, uh, obviously, you can just search for us on the Steam store as well and to boost the unlocks and the more people that pre-order the more stuff you'll all get Uh, obviously it's all sort of it all rolls back so if you pre-order a bit later on then you've unlocked uh you've unlocked like one of the earlier bonuses it's everybody gets everything basically so you're not going to be missing out um we'll take a very few very quick few last questions um boyd on the forum wants to know how long will the single player mode be um so if you if you smash your way through it, I think you can probably do it somewhere between uh, sort of 20, 25 hours, I think. But if you... Um, That's missing a lot of content, though. Yeah, exactly. If you if you just complete the required events and then keep moving through it, then you can do it about that quickly. But if you actually do all the side missions, as it were, so promo events, uh, vehicle challenges, uh, and you do a bit of test drive as well, um, then I think it's about 30 hours. So... Yeah. Um, there's, there's a fair old whack of content in there. Uh, not only gameplay, but there's some sort of uh, video FMV content through the career as well. Um, it's not something that we showed off much, but it's something that does come up very often. A lot of people want to see sort of how the damage works in Grid. Um, we will be showing that off uh, a little bit uh, as, as sort of as the weeks go on and as we get closer to launch. Um, I suppose the short version is he wants to know, like, 
if there's going to be wheels flying around the track and sort of terminal damage and things like that. Um, there's a really good example of that. If people look up the uh, Eurogamer video, um, basically we did a presentation at Eurogamer where I spoke a little bit about live routes, but also uh, Gin, who's the car handling uh, lead designer, he talks quite a lot about how we uh, manage and, and construct the damage in the game. Um, Wheels and stuff flying off, yeah, you can uh, burst tires uh, and the, the wheel, you, you basically uh, shred it all the way down to the wheel. Um, those things happen, you have to really just contend with it as you drive through. Um, but we always have to just be mindful of what, what the constructors, constructors and manufacturers uh, want. So uh, if we were showing it in quite such an extreme way uh, that they weren't happy, then we'd obviously have to rein it back in. So it's a, it's a fine balancing act for each different car and each manufacturer, really. Awesome, right. Um, another question that comes up a lot, a lot of guys are asking for specs for the PC. Um, obviously, it, that's on the Steam page as well. It's also on the IGN wiki. Uh, ben will fire links to those into the chat box for you guys as well. Um, another question that's come up as well, people want to know if audio names are going to be back. So will the game call out your name like it used to? There was the, the very nice assistant lady yep. that yep. would say, Hello, Lee. As yeah, you definitely. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, so you, uh, Patrick Callahan, will be chatting to you in first name terms when you're in the game. Whether or not that's your real name or whether it's a nickname like Chocolate or, you know, whatever it might be. Oh, yeah. cool. <laughs> okay, Chocolate. Um, yeah, those are back in there, so that's quite a cool touch. Uh, in addition to that, though, as well, in the career, um, if you type your name into the game, um, your profile sort of exists through everything. So as the WSR grows around you, the media that picks up uh, you as a driver and begins to sort of talk about your skill, um, where you're going in the world of racing, you'll actually have your name displayed in the video. So we're actually re rendering uh, the correct text for whoever has put that in, in their profile into the videos live in the game. So that's another like nice little touch, I think, just to make it feel like it's your career that's evolving around you. Awesome. Right. Okay. Um, I think we're done for the evening. Cool. It was a good show, guys. Home Thank time. You. Thank you very much for coming along, Joe, and really? being our driver again. Same time next week, I suppose. Same time next week, yeah, yeah. six o'clock. Yeah. Um, Ian, it was a pleasure to have you. I know you've got to rush off. I don't cool. want to keep you much later. No problem. Uh, you've, got to get, you've got to get dinner. <laughs> you've got to get back to have dinner. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, a big thanks to, uh, to sort of all you guys to coming along and watching on Twitch TV. Um, if you're just catching in at the end of the live stream, where have you been? Um, what, you, <laughs> uh, what you've having missed dinner. having dinner yeah. probably yeah um, you've missed tonight uh, Barcelona on the overtake uh, we've also shown off Indianapolis on the time attack uh, a little bit of car customisation uh, and obviously what you can see now on the replay is the Court de Azure in the Volkswagen Golf um, we'll have the replay up on YouTube uh, hopefully sometime this evening or it'll probably be tomorrow um, all you need to do is just visit youtube.com slash gridgame um, as soon as it is up, we'll be letting you guys know on Facebook and Twitter, uh, which is twitter.com slash gridgame, and obviously Facebook, facebook.com slash gridgame. Nice and easy, no excuses for forgetting that, is there? No, not at all. No. <laughs> right, okay, uh, it's, been, it's been great to have you along. Um, if by any chance any of you guys are watching in the UK, we have got some game events going on uh, over the weekend. If you visit game game.co.uk slash events um, you'll be able to get a list of, ev uh, of everywhere that we're going to be over the weekend so if you happen to be in the area pop by pop along and you can actually get hands on with Grid 2 have, uh, a, play. have a play have I a believe play. Friday is Brighton so you can spend the weekend at the seaside brilliant <laughs> seeing cars that's all you need seeing cars well yeah that's all you need <laughs> um, so yeah if you liked what you've seen visit preorder.gridgame.com uh, I've been Lee from Codemasters Thank you very much. Round of applause to the driver. Woo. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you. And we'll be back same time next week on Twitch TV. Donations in the inbox. <laughs> <laughs>